Welcome back to another video from SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron, and today we're going to take a quick look at uh, some of the common ski boat underwater hardware components known as uh, shaft packings, stuffing boxes, packing material, and shaft logs. Okay, well today we're going to take a look at some common ski boat underwater hardware components uh, and the, the names and the nomenclature for them. Um, you'll hear me talk, folks who call me on the phone, about shaft logs. This is a shaft log. This is also a shaft log. Two different styles. Uh, obviously this is not mounted in the boat, but typically this part here will be either glassed in to the hull bottom or it will be bolted in uh, with 5200 caulk. But this is a, a very common, for, especially for older boats, shaft log. This style is a bolt-in only. It typically comes in through a hole. The hull bottom has a molded shell for this to go into. And on the inside of the boat, all you see is the hose nipple area of the shaft log. Next we have the uh, shaft packings, also known as stuffing boxes. Um, we have the white nylon type, which is common. We have the brass style with the jam nut, which is also very common. And then we have the newer uh, dripless style. Now there are several brands of dripless packings out there. This is just one of them. Uh, the key difference between uh, the, the, the traditional stuffing box and the dripless, the stuffing boxes are going to have a replaceable packing inside. We'll get to that in a minute. The dripless style is going to have some type of a seal or carbon seal uh, and they typically are going to have a nipple for a cooling hose. There will be a hose that's coming from the engine that cools the seals that are inside of here. Uh, now I actually have a favorite. My favorite is the white nylon type for a couple reasons. One, the dripless works great when they work, but I have seen some catastrophic failures when the cooling line becomes clogged up, that small little quarter inch hose, I have found boats where it's been clogged typically with a combination of uh, debris from a rubber impeller that is shredded, uh, t tends to find its way here and get stuck and then once that those pieces of rubber get stuck in here then the sand and the seaweed and other crud gets jammed up in there and once it stops cooling water uh, it, it, everything goes downhill quickly and I've seen shafts scored so bad that the shafts had to be replaced. So uh, I'm not a big fan of the dripless style. Uh, these two are essentially the same thing but two different materials. The big difference, uh, number one, uh, is how you adjust either one is by tightening by hand. Never use a wrench. But on the brass style there is a jam nut. The jam nut uh, you adjust the packing by hand to the slow drip, then you bring the uh, jam nut up to it, and with two wrenches you have to jam them together. That's what keeps this from rotating. Uh, so on a direct drive ski boat, it's not really a big deal. Uh, you may find some correct crafts that have the same thing, only they're going to have safety wire running through here as an additional uh, safety feature. But on a V drive, uh, these jam nuts can be very, very difficult to access and to turn loose, um, especially if somebody really tightened it. The plastic style, which again, I have never seen a failure on these. Uh, in 30 some years, I have never seen one of these fail. Uh, and salt water doesn't seem to affect them at all. But on these, there's no jam nut. You have a pin that you pull out and then you adjust it and tighten it by hand again and put the pin back in. So particularly on a V-drive where you're limited in access, you can reach in, get the pin out with one hand, adjust it, put the pin back in, and you're good to go. That's the stuffing boxes. Now inside of these two, not, not the dripless style, but we have packing material. Uh, this was a common packing. This is uh, the Teflon during the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Uh, mid 90s. This is uh, Teflon based packing. There will be at least two coils of this inside either one of these. If you can get a third one in, great. Put it in there. And then 10-15 uh, years ago we came up with the, uh, the, the Teflon graphite 
It's a graphite and Teflon combination. Now these two are both Teflon graphite, but it's two different brands. One's GFO, one's GFU. Same thing, only two different brands. Uh, so they act and, and react the same. So that's a quick explanation of the actual components. The uh, shaft logs, the stuffing box, and the packing material. Now we're going to take a closer look at how these go together. Okay, here I've got a, a typical setup. I just took an old shaft and, and put it in the vise to hold it still. You know, put a new shaft log here, a stuffing box, and the connector hose. All these parts are available at Ski Boat Parts Online. Uh, the shaft logs, the uh, connector hose, if you're, you know, they last 20, 30 years, but if you've got a lot of oil in the bilge, for example, the oil will attack the rubber, make it soft. So if it visibly looks uh, nasty or if it's real soft, then you're going to want to replace it. But here's our typical setup. Uh, now, a lot of callers will talk about uh, and ask questions about shaft alignments and excessive leakage. Uh, is simply changing the packing going to fix the leak? Uh, well, sometimes it will, but sometimes there's a, a root cause to that, and that is engine alignment is off. And the first thing I will ask a caller to check is to see where the shaft is riding inside the shaft log. Well, to do that, we have to expose it. We have to look at it. So I'll have him re loosen up the aft hose clamp and pull the whole assembly forward. Now you can see where the shaft is riding inside the shaft log. What you're looking for is that the shaft is centered by eye. You don't need to measure it. Uh, but you can either run a finger around it or by eye look at it. Now, nine times out of ten, a motor that hasn't been aligned for some time, the shaft will be riding on the very bottom because gravity has pulled the motor down, the shaft is on the bottom. Uh, if it runs a while like that, it's also going to wear out the uh, strut bearings as well. So, if it's riding on the bottom, that tells us the motor is going to need to come up. And when you're doing your shaft alignments, I'll, I'll look back and forth to make sure that the shaft is in the middle. Now, if it's off to one side or the other side, that's a different problem. That means either the motor was either installed incorrectly at the factory, it has to go to the right or the left, or there was a, a heavy prop strike and the shaft has bent or tweaked the strut and actually have a bent strut. That can cause this as well. Uh, but if you've got one that's off to the side hard, give me a call, I'll walk you through it. But uh, nine times out of 10, it's riding in the bottom. Worst case scenario, and this is why we sell these parts, the shaft logs, a guy has let it run so long that it literally wears through the bottom of the shaft log. And when it does that, you're never going to stop the leak until you replace the, the whole fitting. So here's our common setup. We're going to make sure it's in the middle. Uh, again, I'm going to go through this real quick. Um, to do this on the boat, you're going to slide this forward, and then you got to get a little pick tool in there. I didn't bring my pick tool over, so we'll just use this. We got to get the first fittings out. There they go. You'll slide that washer forward, and again, the doing this on the boat, you're only going to get access. You can use this uh, cotter pin to pick it out if you don't have the pick tool. And you're going to pull the the old packing out. Now, while this is on the boat, you're not going to get the, that uh, uh, crush washer. So don't even worry about it. It's not going to come out unless you take the whole assembly out. So when you replace your packing, just put two of them down, then put your beveled washer and then the nut. The same thing is works with the brass. Brass one is down here like so. Some of the crack crafts are going to have a jam nut and a safety wire, double safety. Uh, so what you would do on the brass style, run this off, take your pick tool, pick out the packing gland or packing material, 
put your new packing in, put it, stuff it inside here, thread it back down. When you're adjusting the packings, never use a wrench to tighten the packing nut. Always do it by hand. And as soon as you feel just a little bit of resistance, stop, take two wrenches now and tighten the jam nut against the main nut, and now you have to do a water test. Uh, run it up to 20, 30 mile an hour, bring it back down, shut it off, and adjust to a very slow drip. Cutting the packing material. Here's how I cut the packing materials. Wrap it around the shaft. Take a single edge razor blade. And I like to cut on a slight angle, about a 45 degree angle. So that when it wraps together, it will overlap each other. We're going to get two two wraps out of here. Oop, just dropped one. It's okay. We sell the packing by the foot. There we have our second wrap. And this would get stuffed in the brass one up in here. And you'd push the second one up right behind it, making sure that the two seams are 180 degrees apart from each other. Uh, once you have them both in there, you would thread it back down. So one foot of packing material is more than enough to get two rings uh, for a one inch diameter shaft or inch and an eighth diameter shaft and you'll have just a little bit excess that you throw away. So that's a, a quick look at uh, the whole shaft packing gland and stuffing box and or the shaft log. Here is a closer look at the shaft coming through the log, the, uh, the relationship between the two. Here the shaft is low. Here the shaft is to the port side or left side of the boat. Uh, here the shaft is to the right side or starboard side of the boat. And what we're looking for is even spacing all the way around. This is what we want to look for and want to achieve. Here we're going to take a closer look at the plastic style stuffing box and the sequence of the pieces that go into it. Uh, this is the housing with the very first beveled washer placed at the very bottom. The bevel needs to be against the packing material. Next will come our first ring of packing material. Next will be our stainless steel crush washer. Now remember, if you're doing this on the boat, this is as far as you'll need to disassemble. Go to the stainless steel crush washer. Uh, you're not going to get that crush washer out of there while the whole assembly is on the boat and the shaft is in there. You, to get that out, you would need to remove the stuffing box from the boat. On a removed plastic stuffing box, after the stainless crush washer would come one ring of packing material. But if this is done on the boat, again, uh, you would place two of these rings in front of the crush washer placed uh, with the seam placed 180 degrees apart from each other. The next piece will be the second beveled washer. Now what you see here is the flat side the beveled side of the washer is against the packing material. Uh, then after this comes the uh, actual threaded uh, compression nut. Well, thanks for watching another video from Ski Boat Parts Online.com. I'm Ron, and I hope this helped you with your ski boat and your project, uh, keeping your boat running. Uh, as always, these parts are available at our website. Uh, you can find these under the Ski Boat Parts section and the category would be underwater hardware and uh, we'll put put a link for this uh, on here so you can find it easier thank you see you next time